the more I dug in, the more I found out how fucking crazy this world really is. But I also found out that you're going to hit that glass door. And when you hit that glass door, you're not invited anymore to participate in any further conversation. So Mm -hmm. uh, it stays shady forever. It's going to stay shady. Uh, But uh, my thing for Dear Boxing was I got to the point where I was talking to people from um, network TV, behind behind the scenes of network TV, not the Steven Espinosa and the puppets that they put in front of us. I'm talking about behind the scenes Mm -hmm. who actually pay the fucking bill for the advertisers who are advertising on the network. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, Because I wanted to get down to the sea um one of the numbers really like and one of the interesting things i did part of this documentary which was really cool was we tried to get a hold of the nielsen ratings team uh mm-hmm. because do you know much about nielsen ratings do you know how they work i know about nielsen agency like they're like the big data company they're data driven now but they came out originally as the tv people so what they did oh, was okay. they, inst- they installed like let me quickly tell you what they do so you'll find this really funny afterwards so um, they installed 30,000 or less boxes inside the homes of America mm-hmm. that that records each home's TV viewing, right? And then that's how they get these uh, uh, numbers, like, you know, Jamar Cholo versus uh, Tony Harris to the 371,000 views. I mean, that's on Showtime Digital, but we're talking mm-hmm. about Fox properties, uh, ESPN properties that did 300,000 views, Crawford versus whatever. Um, when you really think about where those numbers are coming from, it becomes interesting. And you become, you become an investigator yourself because you're like, mm-hmm. you're telling me 300,000 people will watch that Crawford fight or watch that Charlo fight that was on Fox. It's like, but when you do the data research and you see that there's only 12,000 tweets that night, mm-hmm. where the fuck are 295,000 people? You got to ask yourself where they live, right? You got to mm-hmm. ask yourself where they were. You're telling me the 290,000 boxing fans who watched that fight and didn't feel like tweeting to their friend or message their friend on WhatsApp. You already see the Cholo fight because mm-hmm. all that data is like calculated. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm like, this has something to do with these fucking Nielsen people. Then I don't think they're calculating the numbers. Right. And then the more I dug into Nielsen and the more I found out that their numbers are totally fucking fabricated. Like it's totally fabricated. Uh-huh. Um, and why are they fabricated? Because they please the advertisers because mm-hmm. the advertisers are paying the bill. And the advertisers are paying the network and the network's using that money to pay the fighters. So mm-hmm. it's a whole fucking circle of people circle jerking each other all day, all day, all day. It's a repeat system, repeat system, repeat system. That's how the tabs of these fighters are being made. And that's how the tabs of these networks are being paid. And that's how the tabs of these advertisers are being paid. And mm-hmm. the reason that's so interesting for me to find out is because, um, once again, I'm not talking digital, I'm just talking cable, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. And, and what's, what's really interesting for me to see was, when DAZN into the market because they came and just disrupted it and they came with that whole philosophy of no pay-per-view and all this stuff. But one of the things that they disrupted people with was we are going to be the premier data and, and fan acquisition platform, which I still mm-hmm. hope they can be. They're not showing much sign of it today, to be honest. I think they're fucking awful so far at what they're doing. But um, uh, uh, once again, it's just like they came in to the market as the data analytic audience acquisition team Mm -hmm. and they could still very well prevail in this sector because what's going to happen is what's going to happen on this side of the fence is easy. You know, what's going to happen, right? Those same ad execs that we're talking about, those Mm -hmm. same TVs execs that I was speaking to on the phone, they all have something in common. They were all like 70, 80 years old plus. Okay. So once their little circle jerk finishes and one of them dies and the other guy dies and the other guy dies, Who's going to come up and take their place? It's going to be some young gen exec who who understands advertising, understands data, and who understands the consumption of sports, especially Mm -hmm. boxing, because Mm -hmm. it's not really popular as people think it is or say it is. Jay, you you froze for a second. Uh, Your picture froze, Jay. Okay, there we go. Now I see you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, So when that young data advertising exec comes looks at all the papers and he's like hey man like why are we paying 50 million dollars to this network for when it's when we're not really converting on those ad on those ad placements somebody's gonna have to answer those questions okay Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. as we're talking in the very near future very near future somebody is gonna have to answer why are we paying this fucking tab Mm -hmm. and then they're gonna be like well it was your dad's account and they're like well (laughs) my dad's not here my dad's not here so mm-hmm. I do not want to pay this tab anymore to this network. Oh, well, that's so-and-so's boxing account, though. Like, I don't give a fuck whose account it is. We're mm-hmm. not converting. And it's true. Boxing audiences are not converting. Mm-hmm. You can tell me all you want. 
They're not. I'm in the fucking industry. Don't tell me that they are. I'm a huge fan of the industry, so don't tell me that they are. Because this is one of the things I'm so fucking angry and passionate about is why aren't we converting, right? And this mm-hmm. is my, you know, my stick. I, I talk about this a lot. And trust me, man, right down, mark my words, there's going to be a huge shift in boxing. And the coronavirus might just be an exit plan for some of these people I'm talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear some news. You're going to take a wash, ex- just blame it on corona and just bail? Fucking walk away. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I'll call mm-hmm. you the day it happens. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's going to be all over Twitter the day it happens. And, you know, me and you will sit back, we'll crack our beers, and we'll say, I told you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, and it's going to happen Im- inevitably just because of the very factors that I was just talking about. That and so what do- fans are not converting. And the advertisers are not going to have enough answers. I mean, so the advertising execs are not going to have enough answers for the networks and vice versa. And there's going to be a huge dispute amongst advertisers and, and networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody involved um, once the data takes charge once the data takes charge like we actually have quantifiable data on our audiences what do you have Mr. Nielsen besides 30,000 boxes in the homes of America and you think 300,000 people are watching give, show me those 300,000 people we can mm-hmm. we got 300,000 registered emails what do you have a fucking postal code and it's not even registered like you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it's 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 going to become a very interesting war to see how who's going to come on top so sure. would you say boxing is really not i mean it's already getting smaller but do you think it's even smaller than than the the public really thinks it is like the the, the, the networks yeah. pers- like show yeah, this, yeah, this sport so. is like something huge when the fight's happening but it's actually not really as huge it's not, no no it's not really that huge uh but tyson fury dante walder was huge the big ones are huge like mayweather pacquiao till this day i can remember the buzz it was yeah it was, huge like, and that's like, what the world like, was on it it's it was like, a World Cup. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I and I know that for sure. That was like a party at everyone's place when when that fight happened. But again, you like gotta, when you 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 got to sort of cut you off there, but it's like what you just said it was party at everybody's place. That's the way I look at a casual fan. So when yeah. Charlo or when Crawford or when David Benavides or when um, not Anthony Joshua, Josh Kelly, I'm just naming like boxers who we know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When they're fighting. My way of researching is I call a friend of a friend of a friend. Did you hear Josh Kelly's fighting? Did you hear Terrence Crawford's fighting? Did you mm-hmm. hear that Tony Harrison fight? They're like, who the fuck are you talking about? I know that the needle didn't move. Mm-hmm. But when Mayweather Pacquiao happened, when Mayweather McGregor happened, when Deontay yeah. Wilder and Tyson Fury happened, when I called a friend of a friend of a friend, they at least said, oh, yeah, that boxing guy, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, they said that. And that was more enough for me to be like, okay, it trickled to you, fucker. It worked. Like, eventually mm-hmm. it got to your ear somehow. So boxing is so behind that we're not even reaching that second third print mm-hmm. we're not the one thing is like like the, you, the, the example of crawford is is the one that always what i was always curious about because the boxing media perceives like they show crawford is this superstar or that he's like this you know pound for pound champion and and like he's so popular but i i don't know i don't believe like terence crawford or errol spence I, th- I feel like they, they're one of those maybe cases where maybe the numbers are a little bit inflated on those, on those boxers, but maybe they are, they are, they're highly inflated and, and they are, look, no offense to both fighters. I love them both. I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan of both fighters. Me as a hardcore fan, can't wait. Absolutely. For Very talented uh, and, and, you know, top class. Yeah, yeah. Now, do they appeal to, ca- do they appeal to casuals? That, that's they the could, question. They, they could, if they were marketed right, both of them are marketed right for shit. And I can say that out loud. Both of them have such huge marketability factors in them and none of the handlers are treating them right. Why? And it goes back to the same thing I was talking about. It's because the money's coming in, man. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. until one of them gets knocked out and the stock drops, then what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people don't think like that enough and, and, and it really pisses me off. But going back to your question, it's the same thing. So numbers are definitely being not true than what they are because if they were, the data would show. Would you mm-hmm. agree? The data would show, right? Well, uh, that's, that's, they, it depends they, on the they, data. They who provides? Out. Because now you're saying that the data is probably inflated. No, I'm talking about the TV numbers, not the social side. The okay. social side. Um, what do you mean? Did you mean social side being inflated? Because I could talk about that as well. No, no. If you're talking like the ca- the cable data and all of that, if we yeah, I'm talking about just net- I'm just talking about the numbers. The numbers. Okay. Like three hundred thousand people watched. Five hundred thousand people watched his last fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were talking about Terrence Crawford had like. It was like a million number. Do you remember that tweet that came up by Top Rank recently? Uh, it was no, a really cool number. I would be very surprised if, if million of what? Something million something. I forgot. Okay. And okay. Um, we could look at that afterwards after the call. But um, 
I remember it was a really cool number and I was like, wow, really? But then I go to your Instagram, he has like half a million followers. So it's like, <laughs> it, it, don't tell me that then. Because mm-hmm. people, when you look at an NBA game, okay? And you look at that fucking number of people watching it, then go to the player's Instagram account, you'll mm-hmm. see it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Every NBA player has four or five million minimum followers. Mm-hmm. Each one of them has at least on the shittiest posts, a thousand comments. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like our fucking WBC champion gets like 500 comments okay for mm-hmm. like the night that he wins <laughs> you know mm-hmm. uh well not that that's over exaggerating he gets a thousand or whatever but that's just not even comparable to like uh one of the starting five of any any NBA team gets more than any champion in boxing right now of course people are going to look at this and say well why do you care so much about followers why do you care so much about this and that is because you're moving into a world that's going to matter idiot we're moving mm-hmm. into a world very slowly Ryan Garcia already showed us what's going to happen. He renegotiated his entire contract based on his social media numbers. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, do you not understand the world that we're going into now? Like, forget about your top five now. They're gone in five years. What's going to happen next is that next generation is coming up and all of them are going to start competing for audience acquisition. It's going to be, they're going to be held accountable almost for how much they're bringing to the table. Watch. People mm-hmm. are going to start uh, telling fighters like, well, what are you bringing to the table? How many followers do you have? Right? right? How many fans do you have? How many people can subscribe to your next fight? Because if we're moving into a world now where viruses are happening every year, now we got to do it in indoor stadiums. Well, you better bring a fucking following, kid. 